Okay, local swell trackers, it is Saturday the 9th, and we've got a very rare one-two punch coming, especially the second one coming tomorrow, actually late today, north-northwest swell, but let me get into the upper regions, the large rivers of wind called the jet stream, 30,000 feet up where the airlines like to fly. A big fatty coming off here this earlier this week, this going back Tuesday, with high pressures firmly entrenched in the uh, east pack and out here to our northwest. And that big split, thanks to those high pressures, have lowered the jet stream over the island in the southern branch. And the jet stream tries to get out towards the 180 date line here. As you can see, this is by Wednesday. And as we roll these out further, it does extend and get much thinner. This is Thursday. High pressures are really impacting the jet at this t for this time of year. Here we go. Today, Saturday. This area of, of the jet, the southern branch here, is assisting in a low pressure, rare low pressure, forming 600 miles to our north, and then taking a southern track with a captured fetch, leading to some of the biggest north-northwest to north swells we've seen in decades. Yes, there was one a couple years ago. I think this one's going to be a lot bigger because it was a lot closer. In fact, the storm, the storm center is going to be passing us just 150 miles north but the jet helps in the formation of low pressures at the surface it helps to steer them once they've spawned take a look at the this strange setup right here high pressure here to our northwest and one far off to the northeast rolling these out further the jet stays put here in this area leading to this long lasting surface spinners here to our north 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 to northeast the jet gets bounced up and over thanks to the high pressure here to our northwest this is Sunday the 10th. Then finally, the jet tries to normalize here throughout next work week. Take a look at how big that high pressure is. Time of year, normally the jet can overpower the highs. Let's take a look at those surface winds. Here's the big northwester that we're seeing, that we saw, fill in Friday to heights. Well, it was a, a bit delayed, but still got pretty hefty. It's just these winds from the north and northwest due to the local, due to weather systems nearer to the islands. Starting in the animations, you can see it stayed fairly distant. The winds were some pockets near Hurricane Force, so the periods on Thursday night did see 20, 25 second forerunners and 20 seconds Friday morning from this big fat northwest fetch pointed right at us, but the issue, definitely the winds. This swell, as you can see here, it does have some north-northwest mixing in with that northwest in the later phases. This is later Wednesday. Starting these in again, you see it fades. And this is right when we start to, to see something close by to our north. Take a look at that fetch. This, this is mixing in today, Saturday the 9th. 12 foot surf, 12 seconds, crossing up with the big fat northwest. And it is victory at sea. That's the whole windward side, really big. Likely some spots up to 10 feet our north shore. Seeing some 10 footers from this shorter period mix but this is nothing compared to this guy right here sunday the 10th not that far away some 65 knot winds in this some seas 30 35 feet and the issue is the captured fest tracking right on top of us is the low center it's going to be passing off to the east about a, just 150 miles off the fetch is almost right on top of us we are expecting surf due to the proximity and and wind speeds of 30 to 40 feet at some misto spot it'll be almost undiscernible very dangerous life-threatening not to be challenged roll these out, out further you can see how we're going to get slammed with high winds bad weather especially sunday we have a system tracking rapidly up into the aleutians here that'll pump us up with five foot northwest surf at 16 seconds wednesday thursday ish but it's going to be underneath north to northeast swells we're going to be experiencing now we're going to take a look at the the swells created by those surface winds we were looking at. Here we go with the northwest swell, starting off west-northwest and ending up north-northwest off of the Kuril Islands. Starting up the animations, this is a beefy storm with 45-foot seas. The altimeter confirmed. It's at the dateline right now. As it broadens, it weakens into Wednesday. This is Wednesday. It gets fairly close to us, 12 to 18, probably some 20-foot surf, but absolute slop chop. It almost doesn't even matter. Again, thanks to the 12 foot, 12 second north swell mixing in. Let's take these out a little bit further, a little bit at a time. This is again Saturday, today the 9th. There's the wind swell and here is the ground swell. Over 45 foot seas, that is not far away. The captured fetch allows the already agitated seas to be gripped 
and built up even, even greater, continuing on. These are seas that nearly slam directly on us. Thus, some of the wave faces on these, will they'll be undiscernible, breaking miles out to sea, likely to close out Waimea and all reefs along the windward side. Again, breaking three miles out, maybe further, uh, with wave faces up to 60 feet, but mostly undiscernible, thanks to what you're looking at right now. Here's the little guy that'll pump us up for some five foot northwest swell at 16 seconds on Wednesday, Thursday. But thanks to what's going on nearby, I'm not sure we're gonna notice it. Here comes another system that pumps us up for Wednesday. This reinforcement could get as much as 15 feet from the northeast, maybe even bigger. Again, right on top of us. Here's another low racing up into the Aleutians, more powerful. That one could bump us up to about seven feet on Sunday the 17th. Things start to try to ease up a little bit, but this is Thursday the 14th. How long is, this is a marathon, and looks like California is gonna be getting some serious size swell. And even towards the weekend, we still have large and in charge northeast swell, but I guess it's all relative. Normally this would be considered big, but it's tiny compared to what we're see, gonna see tomorrow Sunday. Now the swell will be peaking in the afternoon two, three, four, five o'clock, some of those 40 foot sets, Hawaiian scale. The morning's still gonna be heavy duty, 15 to 25 feet, but it is gonna ramp up significantly from lunch to three o'clock. And here's what we look like on Sunday. Things seem to be mellowing out for sure. Taking a look at the swell periods, we could see the longest forerunners already passed us from the big west-northwest to northwest. We're in the 16, 17 second bands now as that will be declining throughout this evening into Sunday. And then as we start these in, we can see the 14 to 16 second period, north-northwest to north swell. A lot of the energy is passing us to our west. Here comes those tiny little northwest reinforcements underneath. There comes the next Wednesday northeast swell, and here comes that last one for Sunday the 17th. That should get about seven feet, much more normal but it is gonna be crossed up by the nearby system bringing in still high northeast swell. I'm gonna guesstimate eight feet there. And this is next weekend, nuts. Let's take a look down under. Not bad when you're looking at this time of year to see 150 knot winds in the jet. It is zonal here, but there are meridional or equatorial bound flows. Whenever you see it do coiling like a snake, that often points to wind spinning low pressure spinning at the surface. Starting in the animations, this current period, there's not enough strong winds for those equatorial bound flows to bring us up any surf. We're not looking too good over the next week. Even though this looks like it should have a storm inside of it, it doesn't. We'll keep these going and then we go back to zonal here next week and then we get another tilt pointing most energy off to the Americas. At least we started off with this. The energy here to the southeast of New Zealand did enable one nice low pressure to send a short fetch up, and we are seeing the effects of this one foot of swell 16 seconds south-southwest that was generated a couple days before this, but this is the remnant energy in the jet that helped to spawn that low at the surface a few days before. This is the one I'm talking about. This is a week ago, Saturday the 2nd. It started off east to the southeast of New Zealand, and now ends up its track going the other way, which is not good for us. But if that thing would have been tracking up, we would have seen the overhead waves in February. And then you can see here, Monday the 4th, this current work week, it goes really quiet. There's absolutely no chance of us seeing any swell here from this current scenario. The only thing we might be able to get as we bring the models current, there's a slight chance of something off of Fiji here, right there. Of course, the track is not optimal and the fetch is very short, but models are hinting that we might see a little something come out here for a southwest swell around the 17th, 18th, Sunday, Monday. We'll wait and see about this one. Let's give it Monday, Tuesday. Again, southwest and we'll give it a 30% chance. Pretty rare to see something from Fiji. Taking a look at the swell periods from down under, of course, off that big northwest here. Here comes this big northeast, north, northwest. There's a little bit of this energy trying to make its way up from the Tasman Sea. That's real sketchy. It's pretty quiet here the upcoming week, as you can tell. Here's that little fetch trying to get out on Thursday the 14th. 
won't take as long to get up to us since it's a couple thousand miles closer than the normal swell generation area southeast of New Zealand. The water vapor loops showing actually the brown dryer sinking air masses. We're in a fairly stable atmosphere now, but that's all changing. Here comes the low pressure, bunch of popcorn dropping on top of us. Here's another view of it. High pressure over here, low pressure here, high pressure over here, squeezing that pressure gradient. That low is gonna track right again on top of us. Clouds below will stay put in the intertropical convergence zone. It's much further north than normal. Here's another view of it. Definitely weather and every advisory in the book. A high surf warning is 25 foot faces. We're gonna be double that at least. Conditions, absolute slop chop. Highs, mid 70s, lows, feels like 50s. You can see there's plenty of cloud buildup here. Today, Saturday, and this is only the beginning. Here's the hand-drawn surface charts that really help to visualize the low pressures here nearby, the associated fronts, high pressure, solid pressure here to our northwest, solid high pressure far to the northeast, and they're working in concert to deliver this fairly historical episode. The rain is coming. Again, the winds from the north to north-northwest. You sort of see it in the rain flow here and the reflective loops. All right, here's another look at the prettier models showing extreme winds pointing down with some north northwest to north angle super close to us we'll bring this in later on saturday here's the storm center moving our way as well here's sunday morning and that low will be passing over here to the east and look how close those high winds are so just a and there's some low pressures racing off into the Aleutians to add in some northwest swell on wednesday and some more next Sunday. Take a look at this support on Wednesday. We're gonna be bumping back up from a higher northeast angle, 15 feet at least on this one. Pretty active, I'd say, February. Memorable, just like January. We'll be back next weekend with your local Swole Tracker. Thanks for your support. Thanks for being here. Aloha.